Okay, so now let's take a quick look at automating some parameters with automation clips and otherwise. First, let's go right click on this knob up here and then we'll go to edit events under the automation group. And that brings up this edit events window. And what we can do here is we could just draw whatever and zoom in and out how we would in any other editor like the playlist or a piano roll. And we can just draw however we want that knob to move when it's automated in this pattern. And we can see it move here. And also if we had that pattern in a playlist, we could see that line drawn. And that's easy enough. We could also right click and drag if we wanted it to be a straight line. And then if we wanted to close this window, we could then first open the piano roll. And then edit in the piano roll. That way it just shows up down here so you can see it with your notes if you want to do it that way. And you can select that down here as you would if you were choosing the velocity or any of these other parameters. And you can see that you could just control A, delete if you wanted to get rid of it, and that's gone. But more often the way to do that sort of thing is to make an automation clip. And how you do that is you just right click on your knob and hit create automation clip. And what that does is makes you this little editor in the playlist where you can move point values and draw them by right clicking and edit however you see fit. Change the tension with the dot in between. And whenever you play your song, your knob will follow the contour of this automation clip. And this editor works just like any of the other envelope editors in ImageLine products. You just can right click the knob and change the type. It goes by a snap or you can hold alt to bypass the snap. You can just delete points. If you go up here you can select slide and then you can move the entire thing after a point if you drag one. You can turn that off and turn on the step editor and then you can draw it like you would in the edit events or you can also get rid of a bunch of points that way. But overall, that's how you draw inside of an automation clip. And automation clips are good because you can repeat them by just copying them like you would a pattern clip or an audio clip. You can copy with the shift click and drag. You can make them unique by clicking up here and making unique. That way that one instance is unique and then the rest of them can be edited at the same time. You can slice that with the right shift. And if you hold shift and scroll on them, you can nudge them around. So they basically just work as any other clip in the playlist. Also, if you double click on them or just select them in the channel rack, that'll do the same thing. But if you do that, you can see this LFO option. And what that does is turn on the LFO. So I'll make a separate one and just use that as an LFO for the pan, create automation clip. But for this panning, we'll turn on the LFO, and you can see that it has a LFO, or low frequency oscillator as that stands for. It basically just makes it so it follows an automated line of whatever shape that is synced to the tempo. Or not, if you choose not to be, but you can change the speed, the amount, pulse width, you can skew it, and the tension. But the cool thing to do with that is you can automate the speed. So if you right click here, copy that value, then create an automation clip of that knob. So basically what you're doing is automating your automation clip, which sounds a little crazy, but stay with me. It's pretty neat. We'll set this so it is at whatever, really. We'll copy that and paste that value here. Then we'll make it a little faster. We'll make it so it's locked at four or so for the speed. Copy that value and we'll paste it here and make that a hold. So it's here and then when it gets here it doubles the speed. So what we'll do for that is we'll trim that down so it is this length that way it restarts but basically if we watch our knob it does the cycle slowly and then it starts over and goes through the cycle twice the speed when it gets to that point in our automation clip. So we're automating our automation clips, which is pretty neat.
And another thing we can do like that is change our minimum and maximum values. We'll go back to our first automation clip and do that. And this one isn't affected by the LFO because this is our first automation clip that we did. But we have these minimum and maximum knobs here. And what they do is basically make it so at 100% of this automation clip, that will only be whatever this maximum is set to. And similarly, the minimum would be when this automation clip is at zero. So at this moment, our minimum is set to 25% and our maximum at, we'll say, 75. So this automation clip goes from 25 here up to 75 at the top. And what we can do with that is we can automate our maximum. So here, we can make it so our maximum is 50 and then changes to 100. So we have some crazy math that I'm not going to do in my head. But essentially what that can do is just add a bit of variation if you're trying to automate something. And that can be good so it's not so consistent the whole time. But just to show you that that's something you can do and get that idea in your brain in case you find a use for that down the line, which on occasion that certainly does come in handy. So just so you know exactly how these work, all an automation clip is is basically just a controller. So we can see that there's the check mark next to our link to controller option. And all this really means is that our internal controller selected for that parameter is this particular automation clip. And you could change that if you wanted to. You could change it to any of the other automation clips or whatever other controller. And that's a good way to adjust your automating if you ever get to a point where you want something to be edited somehow. I'm not going to edit that right now though. And finally, I'm just going to mention that you can do the edit events and convert that to a automation clip. All you would have to do is draw whatever in and say edit, turn into automation clip. And it'll ask you how much you want to decimate or essentially chop up into those points and lines. And I'll just leave it at the default for now. But basically, that drew in whatever I drew in the edit events and made it into the points. So that can be helpful if you did something by edit events, but you want to switch that over so that you can edit it a little bit better. But at any rate, I'd say that's kind of the idea of looking at automation clips. Sometimes it might get a little bit confusing, but there is a logic to all of it. And I think once you get the hang of it, it's not too terribly difficult. You just kind of need to keep track in your brain of everything that you're linking to everything else. But I hope seeing me do all this stuff has given you a first look at that. And you'll be able to use this knowledge in the future to help you out in making some cool stuff down the line. We're going to be using this stuff later as well, so be ready for that. I'll see you in the next video.